To all of you watching this video, I hope you are having a great day. We're looking at a good reconciliation video. I am Mr. Ish and we will be looking at this function right over here. But it is very well representative of that type of a function. You have a x squared plus a squared or a squared plus x squared. It's the same here. Order does not matter on the positive. But if you were to look at this, you would be initially inclined to do a trigonometric substitution technique. You can do that. But then if you remember the inverse hyperbolics, you could also get very well to an antiderivative right away and it would be this plus c. I'm not writing the plus c but that right there would be your antiderivative because you'd be thinking of something like this. The derivative of this would be 1 over root x squared plus 1 or 1 plus x squared. You can go backwards with regards to the integral and end up exactly right here. You can also remember these other important ones hyperbolic cosine and then here you'd have a x squared minus 1 within the root and then the, the inverse hyperbolic tan you would have here 1 over 1 minus x squared. If you have integral forms which look very much like this think about inverse hyperbolics and just go the easy route because all of these can be literally addressed by means of the trigonometric substitution. You have an a squared plus x squared or x squared plus a squared. You have an x squared minus a squared. You have an a squared minus x squared. You have all of these forms. You can do a trigonometric route. We can do the trigonometric route and it wouldn't be anything wrong. Just understand that if you're going the trigonometric route, you're getting a different expression. But that antiderivative and this antiderivative are exactly the same. You have to be able to reconcile the two. And let me show you that reconciliation procedure. That reconciliation procedure will increase your comfort level with inverse hyperbolics. When you're looking at this, you're seeing a is equal to 1, x is equal to tan theta, and dx is equal to secant squared theta d theta. You have to put everything here with regards to your integral form. You have a secant squared theta d theta, and here you'll have a 1 plus tan squared theta. But from here, you're going to get a secant squared theta by the identity, which will become a secant theta. That secant theta will cancel with that secant squared, and you'll end up with nothing more than just a secant theta d theta which you know with regards to his antiderivative is this plus c but i'm not writing that but then when you think about this right here theta is equal to arc tan x or x over one you end up seeing this when you plug everything here into this natural log the secant of this is a root one plus x square the tan portion of this theta is just an x and then you have a plus c what i'm telling you this right here is equal to this and the reconciliation procedure is not hard. If you're given questions of this type of integral form, you might as well go to the inverse hyperbolics. You don't necessarily have to do the trigonometric route. It might be unfamiliarity that a person may choose this longer route, but this is just as good route. So let's show you why this and that reconcile very well. I have y is equal to inverse hyperbolic that which becomes sine h y is equal to x which becomes e to the y minus e to the minus y over 2 is equal to x i know this right here is equal to x what am i seeing over here i'm seeing everything over here is equal to a y because this is a function this right here is a function each of these individually was equal to a y which is your function but if y is equal to all of this and i'm seeing y's over here i can substitute this entire expression right here into all the places of y's and if I did that, it would equal to x over there. As you see, x is equal to e to the natural log. You have a x squared plus 1 plus x minus e to the minus natural log. Root x squared plus 1 plus x all over 2. Think back to the good identity of this. e to the ln x is equal to x. e to the minus ln x is equal to 1 over x. These identities right here can help you manage that. And remember back to this very important identity. And let's bring that identity into play. x is equal to this right here. By means of the identity will be just x squared plus 1 plus x. By means of this identity right here with the e base, you'll have a 1 over root x squared plus 1 plus x. All over a 2. You have a common denominator you can bring out. Let's do a good common denominator. When you do the common denominator and you bring the 2 with it, you know the 2 is a 2 over 1. It attaches very well. Your common denominator here is going to be x plus root x squared plus 1. I'm looking right here in this part right here. 1 goes in that. We're not looking at this because this came in later on, the 2. We're assuming it came in later on, though I've attached it now. 1 goes in this that many times, it multiplies with this. You have an x squared plus x squared plus 1 plus 2x root x 
square plus 1. You're just doing a plus b times a plus b. You'll have a square plus b square plus 2ab minus 1. You have to simplify this. I'm going to now create some space because I need space. You've seen all of this. We don't need to show it to you anymore. Open this stuff here in the numerator. I have an x square plus x square plus 1 minus 1. The 1s cancel out. I have an x square plus x square. I'll have a 2x square. Then I have a plus 2x root x square plus 1. This right here in covers everything. 2x plus root x square plus 1. When I look here in the numerator, I can isolate a 2x. When I isolate a 2x, all of that, I'll get a 2x, and then I'll have an x plus all of that. This cancels out, and the 2s cancel out, and I have just nothing left other than an x. But that x is equal to this x, because from all of this right here, by means of this entire procedure, I got an x. Therefore, x is equal to x. We've shown you that this is indeed equal to that by means of this reconciliation procedure. So if you're seeing integral forms like this, don't shy away from going to inverse hyperbolic antiderivatives. They're equally as good as the antiderivatives that you would obtain using the trigonometric substitution integration route. They're much quicker, they're much faster, though we might be unfamiliar with them, but they're much quicker and they're easy. This answer here is just as good as this and they're equal to each other. So keep everything in mind what I've shown you over here. The reconciliation procedure has been done. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.